Yes. Council, hold on a bit. Uh, the session was not being recorded all along. Okay. Let me first do a, a, a recap so that uh, the recording can catch up. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, um, as you come to realize that uh, we are dealing with the family relations, and this is our last session. You, as we always say that um, the duty of care of a guardian towards his or her children does not cease. Whether you are dead, whether you are missing, or whether you are suffering from a mental illness. Why? When you are still of sound mind when you're still okay, when you're still present, you have worked. And the ways your works pay off is by obtaining assets, okay? So as a result of that, in obtaining of these assets, your assets should maintain your family. So this explains why we have management of the estate of missing persons and then management of the estate of a person suffering from a mental illness. Our workshop one is premised on person suffering from a mental illness. And you've said that uh, the first issue to determine is whether this person is suffering from a mental illness. We started with section two on what we call mental capacity, which is defined as one's ability to understand his or her decisions and actions. So in circumstances where one cannot understand his decisions or actions, his mental consciousness will be questionable. But that will not conclude that this person is suffering from a mental illness. Then we went further to section two, which defines mental illness, okay? The same section defines mental illness to mean an accepted diagnosis by a mental health practitioner, okay? So that means for you to come to the conclusion that someone is suffering from a mental illness, there should be proof that this person was diagnosed, okay? was diagnosed and it came to the conclusion that this person suffering from a to the case of Chiwanuka versus Mohan Musisi Chiwanuka. Then where there is no proof, you conclude that it's not conclusive whether this person is suffering from a mental illness. Then you go to issue two, what are the rights of this person? We've said that, that the rights are under article 21, and section 60, a right to be to enjoy equal rights in all aspects of life like other persons. Then two, a right to manage his or her affairs. Then we looked at circumstances under which one will stop managing his or her affairs under section 60, section three, where the board has an appointment of Two mental practitioners come to the conclusion that this person is suffering from a mental illness and cannot manage his or her affairs. Then court will come to that conclusion. Okay. Then after that, we looked at what is the procedure of declaring someone a person suffering from a mental illness. And from this, we started with section nine, which says review by the board. But for you to, re the board to review, the first step that implies that there sh should be a reference, okay? So that means the first step is re reference of a patient to a board, okay? So now cast, cast back to section six, the subsection three. We see the next step. 
Okay, Councillor, thank you so much. Uh, oh, 60 okay. section three, notwithstanding subsection two, a person with mental illness may be stopped from managing his or her affairs where the board orders after it has established by two mental health practitioners appointed by the board that the person with mental illness uh -huh. is stop their counsel okay so what does that mean that the next step is appointment of two mental health practitioners okay aha uh -huh. counsel proceed Okay, um, uh, two, two mental health practitioners appointed by the board that the person with mental illness is not able to manage his or her affairs. All so that means the next step will be court on an application by the relative or a concerned person determines that the person is not able to manage his or her affairs. That is B of subsection three. Am I being heard? Yes. So we can hear you. Okay, so someone, someone in the messages is saying that council should talk about the, the, the board, the Uganda Mental Health Advisory Board. So I don't know what he has to say about that. That is the board. Yeah, someone was saying that he should talk about it. Maybe they, they want to know about it more. I don't so know which is the, the act are you reading? Uh, section 60, third section three of the Mental Health Act. These guys are still on? Hello, I think council has dropped the network. Yeah, I think it did. The, the host should should make the feedback. Yeah. Yes. Um, but but what I was talking about the board, when you look at section five uh, of this mental health act, it establishes the Uganda Mental Health Advisory Board. Then section six uh, gives us the composition of the board. So it is that board which appoints, I think, the two practitioners who uh, will be looking at the person suffering with mental illness, and then they declare. But uh, the board is is there. Is it is uh, it's composed of a chairperson and then six members. So, so I think. Um, you, you have to address yourself to 
Section 5 and 6 of the Mental Health Act. I think the council is back. Uh, colleagues, my, my apologies. My gadget, uh, my gadget has got issues, so I was unable to continue with the same. However, I have to, I had to utilize all possible means to get back to you. Do you guys hear me? Yes, Council. Okay. So, as we were proceeding, we had stopped on the procedure of declaring this person a person suffering from a mental illness. And we realized that in the procedure, the first step is to refer the patient to the board and we said we defined a board we looked at section five and six of the same act which clearly defines a board its composition and its functions as well and one of the functions of the board is to determine matters that have been referred to it by concerned persons in regards to patients. So after the reference has been made, the next step will be appointing of two medical practitioners. Then the third step will be examination of the patient. And then another step will be making a report in regards to the mental status of the patient. So where the board upon examination, it comes to the conclusion that this person is suffering from a mental illness, then we shall proceed under section 60 subsection three. So then that person will lose capacity to manage his or her affairs. Are we together up to that point? Yes, council, yes, together. Okay, so now at that point, we have conclusive evidence that this person is suffering from a mental, mental illness. So he or she cannot manage his or her affairs. So then that takes us to what are the possible remedies in the circumstances? What are the possible remedies in the circumstances? When it comes to remedies, our remedies are divided into two. We have what we call interim remedies and then long-term remedies. Interim remedies and then long-term remedies. So according to the set of facts that is before you, we shall deal with the interim remedies. So what interim remedy should we deal with first? Yes. According to the set of our facts, okay? The first interim remedy to protect your client's assets is by caveating. Which type of caveat is a beneficiary caveat? We shall proceed under Section 139 of the RTA will lodge a beneficiary caveat. 
And also, you should appreciate the fact that also under section 170, the registrar of titles has the mandate, it has the powers to lodge a caveat for and on behalf of persons suffering from a mental illness. So also under such circumstances, we can proceed with those two caveats. Then another interim order we may need is the interim order and a temporary injunction thereon. Okay, so if we get a temporary injunction, what is the essence of this temporary injunction? We shall look at um, section 38 of the Judicature Act, read together with section 98 of the Civil Procedure Act, not forgetting order 41 and order 50 of the Civil Procedure Rules. Reason we have the temporary and interim. That's why I'm quoting those laws. Someone may ask that now, why are we going for a temporary injunction? Do we have a main suit? Okay, so I was submitting that uh, someone may ask him or herself that how are we going for temporary injunction? Okay, how are we going for temporary injunction? Because for you reasonably believe that uh, referring to the case of Haj Chimbakago versus Abdina Sakatende. Okay that uh, there should be existence of a main, a main suit, okay? So in the instant case, we shall see how and why after we've gone to the second remedy, okay? So our second remedy is an application for an order to manage the estate of a person suffering from a mental illness. So this remedy is what we call a permanent or a long-term remedy. It may not be permanent, but we can refer to it as the long-term remedy. So now let's go to ways of appointing a person, a personal representative, okay? Ways of appointing. Uh, yes. How do you, which is the long term remedy, sir? The long term remedy is an application for an order to manage the estate of a missing person. 
It's not permanent, but it's long term. Pastor, is it missing person or person with mental illness? We are still dealing with person with mental illness, Castro. Workshop one. Can we together? Yes. Okay. So let's go on. Okay. So, can so take us to section sixty, subsection three. Yes, Council, I'm there. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, notwithstanding subsection two, a person with mental illness may be stopped from managing his or her affairs where the board orders after it has established by two mental health practitioners appointed by the board that the person with mental illness is not able to manage his or her affairs or uh -huh. put in application, caught on an application by a relative or a concerned person determines that the person is not able to do her affairs. That is subsection three, part B. I continue. Okay, so we are most interested in the last one, where court makes an order. So now, first things first, how do we apply to court? And so which section in that act tells us how to apply? Yes, which section tells us how to apply? I haven't yet addressed my mind. Maybe let me check. Huh? Where the law is salient, what mode do we use? The, the, the case is said by chamber summons. I don't know if that's right. The case is said by chamber summons. Hmm? Session two. Huh? We shall proceed under order 15. No, it's Shiba by someone. Session two, administrative act. Section two, which act council? Administration of uh, of the estate of the person with concerned mind. Council, that act was repealed. You are reading wrong law. We are using the Mental Health Treatment Act. So, Council, you're reading wrong law. So, all the cases you have, okay, all the cases you have, those cases, the reason why they are using chamber summons, it's because the law that they were referring to, the old law, said that the application was to be by chamber summons, okay? However, the current legal regime, the law is salient on what exactly to go with, okay? So under such circumstances, because the law is salient, we shall go with a notes of motion supported by an affidavit. Okay. But our notes of motion, we shall not use miscellaneous application. We are going to use miscellaneous cause. Reason, we are initiating We are initiating the suit 
Okay? We are commencing this suit by way of a notes of motion, but it has no any other matter where the suit is emanating from. Okay? So that is the essence why we are using miscellaneous cause, because the matter is coming as an independent matter. So after you've brought your miscellaneous cause, that's when you will draft the entry, okay, emanating from that, okay, even the temporary but emanating from that matter, okay? Now, the second question, who can apply for this order? Can again read section 60, subsection 3B. D, this says, call to mm. up by a relative or a concern. So that means the person who can apply is a relative or a concerned person. Does section two define a relative or not? Or it defines dependent relative? Let me check. It defines dependent relative. There is dependent only. So let's read dependent relative. Okay. Yeah, a wife, a husband. When you are reading a section, the person they start with takes priority and takes precedent over others. Okay. So when you are given facts and you have wife, you have children, you have grandmother, the way you read that section, that person takes precedent. Let's go cancel. A wife first, a husband, a son, or a daughter under 18 years of age, or a son or daughter of all above 18 years of age, who is wholly or substantially dependent on the person with mental illness. B, a parent, okay. mother, a sister, a grandparent, or grandchild, who is wholly or substantially dependent and the person with mental illness for the provision of the ordinary necessaries of life that's suitable to the person of his or her situation, or any other person who is wholly or substantially dependent on the person with mental illness. Uh -huh. So when you are reading facts, the first person to be given priority, if you have a wife, husband, or children. So when you look at our facts, these guys are children of the person who is presumed to be suffering from a mental illness. So that means they stand the chance to make the application. Okay? Then the, another issue would be what is the forum and procedure? What is the forum and procedure? Can I have a question before you go there? Yes. Uh, we have, we have uh, in our facts, we have Michael, that is the, the third youngest son. And then we have Joy, mm. the first is uh, in control of all the property. So when court is determining who is capable of controlling the property, how does it, how does it tell? Because I know Joy will also come up and say, I can manage this. Kansa, ah. who is your client? Michael, okay. Thank you. And besides that, when you read that act, we have an offense of intermediary, you know so? Yes. That means Joy has already committed an offense, so she isn't a fit and proper person. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's go on. Okay. So now, what is the forum and procedure? Okay, so which section provides for forum? Jurisdictions. 
does any when you read that act does it talk about jurisdictions anyway no comment, yes I haven't. No, I haven't seen anywhere. so we only consider the jurisdictions in the civil matters okay we know the geographical and then the pecuniary jurisdictions but unfortunately when you look at your facts they never gave you the estimated amount but when you look at the size of the estate it falls within the ambages of the high court so that means the forum is the high court of Uganda. okay then what's the procedure? The procedure is this normal procedure that we know. Okay, one, you draft the pleadings, you sign, pay court fees, you file, you serve, you go for hearing, and then lastly, granting of an order. Okay, counsel, which section talks about granting of an order? Yes. I'm I'm still looking, I'm still checking. Uh, so you look at you look section six, the subsection three. You read it again. It also has that element. Of what you know? Of what you know, sir. Section six, subsection three. The Mental Health Treatment Act. Uh, subsection 3, part B. Okay. So then, after that, court, if court has issued an order appointing a manager, ask yourself, what are the functions of this manager? His duties and powers. Okay. The ultimate duty of the manager is to manage the estate of a person suffering from a mental illness. However, when you read that the law, it is very clear on certain things. There are certain actions that cannot be taken without an order of court. Okay, Council, which section is that? That limits some actions. Functions of the manager. Which section is that? Yes, counsel. Section 63. Section 63 gives us the functions of the manager. Okay. But it goes ahead to limit certain actions with permission of court. And under this, we have investing the asset to lending, mortgaging, exchange, ETC, as section 63 may prescribe. Okay. Then, at what point does this order, what is the lifespan? of an order to manage the estate of this person. What is its life span cancers already? Yes? Yes, cancers already. What is the lifespan of this order? I'm not sure. Let me confirm. Okay, so open your act, you will see where there is recovery of the patient. So the lifespan is upon recovery, basically. Once the patient recovers, he will fall under section 63, subsection 2. This person will be having capacity to manage his or her estate because he has recovered, okay? 
then another circumstance where this can be brought to an end where there is mismanagement of the estate okay where there is mismanagement of the estate so now from what we've covered patiently okay regardless of the disturbing gadgets can you colleagues allow me we we'll go through the facts of workshop one Cancel workshop two okay Yes, the facts of workshop one. You can proceed, Council. Okay, Council. I don't have them here with me because uh, I'm using someone's gadget. My gadget got issues. Eh? Okay. Hmm. So the facts read My name is Michael Kaga. I am 35 years old. I live at Kawempe, Kampala City. I have a serious concern. My mother, Mary Danantale, is now 76 years now, first old. Now, first stop there. He has used the food. My mother. So what does that mean? This person is a dependent? Relative. Uh -huh, I'll proceed. She has had a history of memory loss for seven years now. It is a degenerative problem. Mm -hmm. She is also addicted to alcohol, crude waraji in particular. Underline memory loss and addiction. When you go to the meaning of mental illness, is addiction inclusive in examples of mental illness? Yes, it is. So now this person, this person is presumed to be suffering from a mental illness because we don't have what proof. We go on. She has consumed this alcohol for over a decade. She has been losing her memory on several occasions in a year. Uh -huh. However, she has been recovering her memory. Mm -hmm. In April 2023, my elder sister Joy Kaga picked our mother, Mary Danantale, from her home at Namugongo, Kira, in Wakiso district and took her to her home, Joy Kaga, at Intinda in Kampala City. Mm -hmm. She claimed that our mother could not understand what she was doing and that she needed medical treatment. Stop there. Underline the word she claims. Okay. She claims that our mother does not understand. Does not understand. Okay. She doesn't allow any of us to access our mother. Huh? She claims that she takes her for treatment. Now, she takes her for treatment. On what basis? On the basis that the mother is not understanding what she's doing. Is she having proof? No. So, uh -huh. what does that mean? That it's still a presumption of mental illness. Exactly. Proceed with my, the my brothers and sisters are Joy Kaga, aged 48, Sarah Kaga, aged 45, Simon Kaga, aged 30, Sylvie, Silva Kaga, aged 28. Huh? My, my mother owns the following property. Land at known as Chagwe Block 244 Plot 15. Land known as Buikwe Block 220 Plot 30. Land at Bali in Luero District known as Bukalasa Block 
164 plot 26. Okay. I have found out that Uganda National Roads Authority, UNRA, intends to construct a road over an expanse of land, including my mother's land, known as Buikwe Block 220 plot 30. UNRWA will compensate all owners of land which will be acquired for this purpose. Yeah. My mother is one of the people who are entitled to this compensation. Yeah. Officials of Uganda government have held a few meetings with people entitled to compensation. My yeah. sister Joy Kaga has been attending these meetings. I have learned That's that the land... Okay. As who? Is he the registered proprietor? No. Okay. Who has told her that her mother cannot attend those meetings? Mm -hmm. Proceed. I have learned that the land known as Boyikwe Block 220, Plot 30, is now registered in the name of Joy Kaga. So now, who signed transfer forms to your understanding? No one. They registered the proprietor. Okay. But the question is, do you think the registered proprietor understand what she's doing at this time? Did she and did she appreciate the essence of signing a transfer form? Was she explained to? Okay. Proceed, cast. A property broker informed me that my mother's property, which is known as Chagwe Block 244, is on sale and that different people have been inspecting it. Okay. It is Joy on, had sale. on sale, but it has not yet been sold. So what interim remedies are available in such circumstances? A caveat. A caveat. And? Mm -hmm. And in the action. Uh, how we go on? Order. Joy had land at Bukala sub block 164 at Bali in Luwero district, subdivided into plot, 20 plots of one acre each, and she registered each in her name. So we need to caveat them as well. Uh -huh. She sold three of these plots at 150 million. We declined her offers to us of land out of our mother's land because we cannot steal our mother's property. Uh -huh. That would be a curse. Whenever, when you look at functions, okay, of a legal representative is to totally give true account of the estate, okay? And to maintain it. Proceed, Castle. We cannot repay for, we cannot repay for her love for us with such evil. I have reliably learned from Joy's maids that my mother cannot talk or recognize people. That means I, the mother did not understand the decision and their effects that she made in signing transfer what? Transfer forms. Mm -hmm. I am apprehensive that Joy may poison our mother. Okay. So I am that worried that... They want to have custody of their mother. So what long-term remedies are available? Yes. Because what's the long term remedy in the circumstances? Application for an order of management. Any question on workshop one? Yes. Any question? Pastor, so for workshop one, 
in this case that we have to draft both a caveat and an injunction. Yeah, but the most appropriate would be a caveat. Eh? But we'll discuss all of them. If you have time, you can draft all. Okay, it's not fatal. Any other question? So now, for workshop two, uh, unfortunately, I'm not using my gadget, but uh, before I, I want to, to throw an overview in workshop two. Workshop two has no difference with workshop one. Why? The first issue, you'll first determine whether this person is a missing person. You go to the missing persons act, you see how it defines a missing person. This person has to be missing for a period of six months. The family should have advertised and the investigations indicate that the, this person is not seen. Then differentiate between a missing person, a person presumed dead, a person is presumed dead when he or she is missing for a period of seven years. You look at the registration of persons act around section 47, 45, they, is, they really vehemently define that. Then you, after relating to your facts to show that this person is a missing person, then you ask yourself what remedies are available in the circumstances. We have the interim and then the long term. Interim remedies we have in junction. Yes. How many years for the person who is presumed dead? Are they six, seven? No, I'm just inquiring. I didn't had I didn't hear the there are seven years. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then if this person is a missing person, ask yourself for remedies. In most cases, basically for your workshop, they gave you a, an interim remedy of appointment of an agent or appointment of a manager. Where you have, where the missing person had siblings or this person had dependent relatives who have immediate need of money, then we shall first appoint a manager to cater for their needs. That's the interim remedy then. If that is not sufficient, you can go for a caveat. Then after exercising that, then we go to an application to manage the estate of a missing person. You ask yourself who can apply. The same applies to that. It is a relative, but above 18 years. Okay. Then after that, you look at how do we apply. This application is by petition in the same manner as we do letters of administration. That's how the act says. Then after that, you get an order and then look at the duties of this person. Then you look at how this order ends. It's by reappearance of this person. This one is very simple and straightforward than the other one. It has only one case so far, the case of uh, Yokoyas. It's the first case on your, read on your reading list, I think. So briefly, that's what we have for workshop one and workshop two, but we shall have a detailed workshop two on Monday, inshallah. So let me wish you guys the best. My humble apologies for not have made up to expectations, but uh, my gadget got issues and I couldn't proceed with the same. So I had to improvise. That's why I'm using this gadget. So let me wish you the best, comrades. May the good Lord bless you. Let's meet on Monday. Amen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate your effort, Council. Okay, thank you, Council.